Hello there, Mr. Wilson here again for part two of this, the, well, these sets of videos where I talk about differentiation. Um, so if you haven't already, definitely check out the first video where I introduce what is differentiation, how do you differentiate, and um, we sort of right at the very end we looked at a couple of questions. Now in this video we're going to mainly look at practice on basic differentiation. Um, we're going to look at, you know, again how do we differentiate, but also with a, you know, a few questions to have a go at for you guys as well. So that's going to be the objective of, of this video. Um, now, thank you so much for the for the support on all the other videos that I've done so far on this channel. It's definitely been um, something that, that I really appreciate and it's, it, it's really nice to see these videos helping people. So that is absolutely fantastic. So without further ado, let's get straight on with some differentiation. Regarded as one of the greatest inventions in mathematics. So just to recap then, to differentiate a function, right, you multiply by the power and then you subtract one off the power. And the reason why we differentiate something is because differentiation will find us the gradient function of that function. So for example, let's say you've got the um, equation y equals 2x squared. Well, the gradient function we get by differentiating, we times by the power. So 2 times this 2, that's going to give us 4. So we get 4x squared, but then we have to take 1 off the power. So we get dy by dx is 4x to the power 1. But we could just write that as 4x, because anything to the power 1 is itself. So remember, this is the notation that we use to denote the gradient function. So this is the original function. This is the gradient function, and what it tells us is that if we were to sub in an x-coordinate, we can work out the gradient at that point. If you were to draw a tangent to that point, that would be the gradient of, of the line at that uh, of the point uh, at, at that point. So that's what differentiation is. That's why we use it. So let's have a look at some examples then. Some uh, kind of you know, different questions that you might get. So we've got a sort of basic one here, but you might have something a little bit more complicated. And I talked about a few of these in the last video. Let's look at y equals 3x squared plus 4x. And we want to differentiate this. So we multiply by the power. So we get 6x, and then we take one off the power. 6x to the power 1, but anything to the power 1 is itself. So we could just leave it at 6x. So that is that term differentiated. And then this term here, it's technically 4x to the power 1. So we times by the power. So we get 4. And then we take 1 off the power. So we get x to the power 0. Right, if we take 1 off this power, we get x to the power 0. Now x to the power 0 is 1. Right, Because anything to the power 0 is 1. So 4 times 1 is just 4. So we don't even have an x term on this. It's almost like the x term has just disappeared when we differentiated it. So that would be the differentiation of that. Now what happens if we have something maybe a little bit more interesting? Let's say we have something that looks like um, this. Now, right now, if you are doing GCC further maths, you cannot differentiate that as it stands. There is a rule to differentiate something like that, um, known as the product rule, um, but that is an A-level technique. Um, so if you were doing this as a GCSE further maths, that is not a technique that you have. But you could get a question like this in the GCSE further maths. So the first job would be to expand those brackets and get something that looks like what we are familiar with differentiating. But like I said, there is a way to differentiate this without expanding the brackets. Um, using something known as the product rule, but again, that's not a technique that we sort of have yet. So let's expand these brackets. So we get 2x squared plus 3x, and then we can differentiate this just, just like normal. Times by the power, take one off the power. So dy by dx is equal to 4x, 2 times 2 is 4, take one off the power, x to the power 1, which is the same as x, plus 3, because again, just like with the both, when we have a, an x term, it's almost like the x disappears because x to the power 0, when we subtract 1 off the power, that's just 1. So we get 4x plus 3. 
So that's how you would differentiate something like that. Okay, what about, an, again, a more interesting one now? What happens if we've got something like y equals x plus 1, x plus 2? Now again, if you had that technique, you could use the product rule on this as well, but that is not something that, that we have. So we're just going to have to expand the brackets first, then differentiate. So expanding double brackets. Um, some people use the, the what's known as the FOIL method, where you draw the lines that look like this, and you multiply those. Or some people use the grid method, which I quite like. We put x plus 1 then x plus 2 and then you fill in the grid uh, to expand the brackets but whatever method you use you should find it is x squared plus 3x plus 2 and then we can differentiate this so dy by dx is equal to 2x times by the power so 2x squared take one off the power 2x plus 3 and then when we've got this plus 2 because it's x technically this is an x to the power 0 when we times by the power, we're just going to get zero. It disappears because we're multiplying by zero. So that term is going to disappear. And we're just left with 2x plus 3. So these are kind of like the different questions you could get. Just one more then, and another interesting one. What happens if you've got a negative power, so 2x to the minus 1? Well, it's exactly the same idea. We just have to be a little bit careful about when we subtract one off the power. So dy by dx is going to be minus 2, because 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, negative 2 x to the power of negative 2. Because when you subtract 1 off the power, it goes down by 1, so it becomes more negative. So it goes from negative 1 to negative 2. This is the most common mistake. Students will put it as x to the power 0, because they take 1 off and they think it's 0. When in actual fact, obviously, when you subtract 1, it becomes more negative. That tends to be the biggest mistake with differentiating negative powers. Um, now, you could rewrite this as negative 2 over x squared, because raising something to a negative power means to take its reciprocal. So this and this mean the same thing, but personally, I would leave it like this, because if I have to differentiate something again, and we'll talk about why you would have to do that in a future video, um, it's helpful to just leave it as a negative power rather than as a fraction. So what I want you to have a go at then is these questions here. See what you think to these questions and then we'll go through the answers in a second. So pause the video now and have a go at these questions. Okay then, hopefully you've had enough time to uh, have a look at these and pause the video and uh, have a go. So let's go through these questions then. So dy by dx for this first one, well that's just going to be times by the power, take one off the power, so it's going to be 14x. Next one, dy by dx is equal to 9x squared, take away 8. Next one, dy by dx is equal to 24x squared plus 1 because technically it's 1x so it's going to be 1 and then that minus 4 just disappears dy by dx is equal to 7x to the power 6 take away 18x to the power 5 and then finally you have to expand the brackets first then differentiate so if you expand the brackets you get x squared plus 6x plus 8 so this is going to differentiate to 2x plus 6. So let me know how you got on with those questions in the comments. If some of those don't make any sense, then definitely um, let me know in the comments and I'll try and explain those as well. But I'll leave it there for this video. It was just about a little bit of short practice, making sure that we're, we're sort of happy with the idea of differentiation. In the next video, I'm going to go on to, okay, how do we actually find the gradient at point? So how do we sub in? dx coordinate to find the gradient because this is just the gradient function we haven't actually found a value for the gradient yet so in the next video i'm going to talk about how we find the value for the gradient and how do we apply this to different contexts such as things like stationary points um, or tangents to the to the curve um, and, and other such things like that 
So hopefully this video has been useful for you. If it has, then definitely consider um, watching other videos because people seem to think that I explain things quite well, which I'm, I'm really happy about. Um, and then all I want to say is I hope you have a fantastic day.